Hi, my name is Jason Holland. I'm the roving Latin America editor for International Living. Okay, so you want to move abroad with your kids. Well, I have done it twice, and I can tell you that um, while it's not exactly easy, it's definitely doable. There are a few things to keep in mind. The first is that it's never been easier to move abroad uh, by yourself or with your kids. And by that I mean uh, the world is getting smaller. There's high-speed internet just about everywhere, um, so you can communicate uh, back and forth with your home country, your friends and family back home. Uh, you can easily research overseas locations. Uh, travel is cheap and easy just about anywhere in the world, and there are plenty of safe and family-friendly locations in Europe, Asia, Africa, um, Latin America, and beyond. So anywhere you want to live, uh, you can easily find out about it and uh, move there uh, quite safely and easily. As I mentioned, I've moved abroad with my kids twice, uh, first to Costa Rica in 2012 and then to Mexico in 2016. And along the way, I've met dozens if not hundreds of other expats and traveling families in these locations and uh, throughout Latin America and, and Europe and places that I've traveled. Uh, so I know it's definitely doable for people of all walks of life. But there are a few things you have to keep in mind. Uh, you have to have your ducks in a row before you can make this leap. So you have to first figure out, are you going to go full-time? Are you going to make this permanent move? Are you going to live uh, part-time out of the year in an overseas location and part-time back home? Um, are you testing things out for like a permanent move? So you're kind of taking these extended scouting trips uh, to different towns, regions, countries, uh, maybe even continents trying different countries in, in a region. Um, or are you just kind of taking a, a temporary uh, leave of absence, a sabbatical um, from your job and your kids from their school and maybe moving to a place for six months or a year. Um, so you kind of have to make up your mind as to what you're going to be doing as far as uh, your transition. Now the next is to uh, research the location and all the details that go along with it. Uh, you have to figure out where you're going to go. You have to have a plan uh, particular and specific to that place. Um, so moving to Europe is a whole different ballgame uh, than moving to Latin America or the Caribbean, for example. This determines a lot of different things, um, and also your travel style and, and what your plans are. Uh, for example, how much stuff are you going to bring? Are you going to bring just your backpacks or suitcases, or are you going to bring a full shipping container? Um, if you plan to stay in place for a long period of time beyond what a tourist visa allows, so you have to check in to see what the requirements are for residence visas for staying long term. Uh, in different locations, you know, have different, uh, basically, uh, basic service elements there. Uh, so you're going to have to check on things like uh, potable water, uh, reliable electricity, reliable internet service, if those things are important to you. Um, even though there's high-speed internet and electricity and, and water all over the world, in some places uh, it's better quality than others. Now, if healthcare is a concern, especially emergency healthcare, I know how that is with kids. Um, you want to check to see if the location has adequate health care for your needs. Now, some other things that uh, families have to keep in mind are schools. Um, are you going to put your kids into a local school? Are you looking for a private school uh, that is certified by a U.S. state, for example, or part of an international baccalaureate program? Uh, is it important for your kids to continue the same style of education they had back home? Or are you comfortable with putting them into a local school uh, where they can actually pick up the local language much easier but the education might fall behind as they're learning that new language. Or perhaps you're going to homeschool, or there are also options where you can do online school. Many states in the U.S. offer online school options that are accredited by the state. You also have to keep in mind the climate. Uh, are you looking for uh, kind of a hot and humid beach atmosphere? Um, do you want to be up in the cool mountains? Do you want a temperate climate? Um, all these different places around the world have different climates, so you want to research so you find the one that you want. Now, is it safe? That's another huge concern, uh, especially for families. You want to know, if it, is it family friendly? Is it safe? Can we go out at night? Um, you know, what, what is the crime rate in these different locations? Now, the great news is that uh, any country that international living covers is generally safe. And we keep up to date on all the crime stats and uh, have our ears on the ground to see what the local people are saying about crime in a particular area. So any place that international living covers, you can consider uh, to be pretty safe. Now, preparing for the move, you have to think about things like your income. How are you going to make money? Uh, some people just have a savings. They've saved up money over the years, or perhaps they have investment accounts, and they're going to live off of that money. Some people are able to telecommute to their current job. 
so if you stay in an office or a cubicle and basically answer email and go on conference calls all day, um, why can't you do that from a beach in the Caribbean or um, you know a medieval hill town in Italy? You know it makes no difference really. So check with your boss. Telecommuting might be an option. A lot of people start online businesses where they sell products online. Uh, some people go freelance online where they work as writers, graphic designers, web designers. Uh, maybe you can make use of your profession if you're a lawyer or an engineer or an accountant. You could have a consulting or freelance practice uh, where you take on clients online. Now, as I said, what to take, it kind of depends on where you're going and for how long. Um, you can take a backpack, you can take a shipping container. It's important, especially with kids, to bring things that are important and vital to you. Uh, so things like computers, uh, tablets, and cell phones are very important. But you know, with kids, perhaps they have special toys or games or books uh, that they want to bring. It's very important um, that you involve your kids in this and other elements of this transition. You want to make them feel like they're a part of the planning. Uh, so show them where this place is on a map. Uh, show them where you're going to go, what your plans are, what your plans are for school. They're concerned about their social life, their friends, if they play sports, whether they can do so. Uh, the great news is in a lot of these places, especially where they have an expat, expat community, there are going to be a lot of kids. Uh, and it's very easy to make friends for both parents and kids when you get to an expat location, uh, especially if you go to school. Uh, but there are sports activities, there are community activities, there are uh, social clubs, there are all sorts of groups, you know, English language churches, all sorts of groups that you and your kids can join so you can have an active social life, so they can have friends, so they don't feel like they're isolated um, from their friends and family back home. So that's a, a little bit of what it takes uh, to move abroad with your kids. Um, you know, the most important thing I'd say is involve your kids in the process. Have them take ownership of the process as well. So it's not just something that you as a parent are telling your kids that you're going to do, but you want to get them involved and get them excited and that'll make the transition that much easier. Thank you very much.